Hey, what's up YouTube? You're watching SparkSight, and I'm about to do a video today about the Rode Wireless Go. I've been wanting to do this video for a while, so stay tuned. All right, so the Rode Wireless Go has been out for a while, so this isn't anything new, but if you're not familiar with it, I wanted to give you a quick overview of what it is and why we love it and how much we've been using it. First of all, I'm using it right now. I have the belt pack in my pocket, I have a lav connected to the uh, belt pack, and I have the receiver on top of a Canon uh, 5D Mark IV. I have this camera here, which is the GH5, which we shoot with as well, just as a sort of demo, because I'm gonna show you how it connects. But you know, this sound is going straight into the camera, no need to do syncing. We used to do a lot of stuff with an overhead boom mic going into a zoom and then have to synchronize everything, which is not a big deal and, and, and can work really well. But for YouTube and stuff like that, it seems like uh, going straight into the camera saves a lot of steps and we really like it. So the Wireless Go from Rode, I'm gonna go ahead and open up this box. This is a brand new one that we haven't used yet. We have, uh, we have this one and we have the one that I'm wearing. So I thought it'd be fun to do a little unboxing, show you what all it comes with. Uh, you can buy these on Amazon. We'll put a link in the description. You can also buy them, uh, I believe they sell them at Best Buy now. I mean, these are pretty, pretty common and they're about 200 bucks. Here's the quick start guide, which is built into the box. And here is a brand new unused wireless go transmitter and receiver. Now, I will say that unfortunately, we had a client actually break uh, the belt clip on one of ours on the transmitter. She was wearing it and she stood up suddenly and the belt clip just popped off. So be careful about that. Uh, the belt clips are probably the most fragile part of it. I'm not saying they're super breakable, but they're not they're also not super robust. Um, in the box, you get two USB-C to USB-A charging cables with a nice little um, Velcro wrap around them. Uh, I've got the transmitter and the receiver. You get a dead cat, which goes onto the transmitter. Actually, it looks like you get two dead cats. So maybe in case you lose one, because they're not uncommon to lose, you get the eighth inch um, cable, which is a TRS cable. TRS stands for tip ring sleeve, and it basically has to do with the number of rings here. This is compatible with most cameras. Uh, we'll just slide right into the microphone jack very easily. You get the handy dandy little um, humidity pack thing that you're not supposed to eat. Don't eat this. Whatever you do, don't eat this. Um, you get an actual regulatory and safety guide. This is on the 2.8 gigahertz bandwidth, so there is some uh, regulation with regard to communications, and you get a nice little pouch that you can put some of this stuff in. Now, we've actually purchased an aftermarket uh, container here from Amazon. This thing is really nice because it has uh, space cut out for the, for the mics right here, and it also has space for the lav, if you have a lav, the charging cables, and the eighth inch jack as well as the dead cat. I'll set this aside. If you do want this little thing, I do like it a lot. It was pretty cheap. Um, we'll put a link to the description for it as well. But let's get into the actual mic itself. So these things are very, very lightweight. They're about 31 grams or just over one ounce. They are 4.5 millimeters approximately by 4.5 millimeters approximately by 1.8, almost two millimeters in depth. They are, um, as I said, they operate on the 2.8 gigahertz uh, transmission um, protocol, which is pretty common for wireless mics. They automatically are paired whenever you uh, plug them in. They, they just are paired up to begin with, so you don't have to worry about doing that. There is a way to pair them, but I'm not going to get into that right here. They come in black as well as white. Now, if you're doing a formal event or you have a white shirt or a white t-shirt and you want to hide this thing, the white is really handy, but the ones we have are all black. Uh, as I said, they have a clip for actually wearing the transmitter. So this, this guy right here is a receiver. The receiver is the one with the LCD screen. The transmitter is the one that does not have an LCD screen. The receiver slips into the hot shoe on your camera, like so. You just kind of do the clip like this. It'll slip into a hot shoe or a cold shoe. So as long as you've got that on your camera. So fits really nice right there on top of the camera. And then you take, take your eighth inch uh, jack, you plug one side into the output of the receiver, you plug the other side into the mic input on your camera right here, and 
much like having a shotgun mic on top of your camera, you have this little wireless receiver. And then for the transmitter, if you have a lavalier mic, you can plug the lav right into this slot right here. But if you don't, that is actually a microphone right in the center. So if I weren't wearing this lav, which is connected to one of these, I could actually clip this right here on the inside of my shirt or on the outside of my shirt, either way. And it actually would work as a pretty good omnidirectional lav. Now I have used this thing numerous times without the lavalier and you can even set it on the table in between two speakers. Well, uh, if it'll stand up, well, it stands up on its side. The bottom has this button, so it's not exactly flat, but you can set it on the table and you can actually use it to pick up conversation between multiple people, which is great. There's lots of little uh, data points on this thing. For example, when you turn it on, you can actually see uh, your battery level. You can see if you're connected and what your transmission level is. I'll go ahead and turn on the transmitter here too. And you can see the volume level. So I, I just pulled this out of the box so you can see both our batteries are pretty low um, because they haven't been charged yet. You can see my voice bouncing up and down on the VU meter. You can see that our transmission here is really good, our connection. And then you also have a dB level so you can adjust the actual input of it from uh, minus 12 to minus six to zero. So zero is your highest setting, that's, that's no padding whatsoever. So you do that so that you don't get clipping or get too hot of audio. It gives you three basically high, medium, and low settings for your audio, which is great because sometimes the cameras that you plug these into don't have a, um, don't have a manual audio setting. But you wanna make sure to use this in conjunction with your camera's audio setting. So these things do charge via USB-C, which is, uh, kind of the convenient and standard way that modern things are starting to charge. Uh, the nice thing about USB-C is there's not a upside down or a right side up. You just plug it in and it's always gonna work. The, um, the battery life is purported to be about seven hours. We have used this on a shoot for half day, maybe four or five hours, pretty much on and off throughout that four or five hours. And we still had a quarter of the battery left. So I would say seven is probably stretching it a little bit, but um, you know, it also depends on uh, whether you've got your screen dimming and some other things like that. Now, you can set the screen to actually uh, dim. Um, that little icon there in the center uh, allows the screen to either stay full all the time, stay on, which is in right now, or if you hit this uh, button on the top, you can set it to where it'll dim after a few seconds, and that'll save your battery just a little bit. Um, other than that, there aren't a whole lot of controls on the thing. Right now, as I said, we've got, uh, so I just, it just dimmed, as you can see. We've got the DB set at its highest settings. Um, we've got the uh, screen set to dim to save on the battery. And we can see the VU. Even when the screen is dimmed, actually, you still can see the VU meter just going up just a little bit every so often. And so that allows you to know that it's working even when it's uh, dimmed like that, saving your battery. As I said before, you wanna make sure that you are using this in conjunction with your camera's audio settings. So if this is set at full blast, you probably wanna make sure your camera's audio settings are down a little bit. Make sure you're getting good uh, meters and levels on your camera as you incorporate this. To put the dead cat on, you just take these two little white, uh, these two little white spots here and you clip them in to the top of this guy here. They just kind of push down into it. And then that dead cat is actually on there pretty good. And you would be surprised how well this thing actually uh, protects in the wind. When you're out in a windy situation, you really want this on. It'll keep that sound from happening on top of it. Um, and they give you two. So in case you lose one, you have a second one. So overall, uh, the reason that we really love this thing is convenience and size, reliability. It's dead simple to set up and to get going on. And the fact that you're actually putting your audio straight into your camera versus using your camera's internal mic and then recording externally makes your workflow so much easier in situations where you don't have to have the best audio in the world. Now, something like this is not gonna compete with a high-end condenser microphone or a really high-end shotgun mic. Uh, don't get me wrong. So most of the interview type stuff that we're doing today, we're either using this as our primary mic or we're using it as a backup mic that we put on so that we can still shoot with our zoom and our uh, shotgun mic, but our camera reference audio is a lot better and it works as a good backup. 
This thing uh, for 200 bucks, I'm really impressed with it. You can use up to eight of these together in one location as long as they're paired to one another. However, you cannot pair two transmitters from this to one receiver. They have to be used as uh, separate things. However, I do know that you can use two of these on one camera if you have an audio splitter like this. Basically what you can do is plug two of these into your audio splitter and then put your splitter into your camera and that will allow you to actually have two different lavs going into the left and the right channel on your camera's uh, record. So you might drop, the, the audio level might drop a little bit, but it's not enough to cause any distortion. And I've tried this and it actually works. So if you need to have two uh, lobs going into one camera, just a simple little high quality eighth inch audio splitter is gonna do the job for you. So that's it. If you've used the Rode Wireless Go before and have a comment about it, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. If you've never used it and have a question, please leave that question as well and we'll try to get back to you about it. Uh, there is a link in the description where you can get this on Amazon. As I said, it comes in black and white and very, very highly recommend this thing. It's one of my favorite little devices that came out in 2019 and I'm so glad I have a couple of them because they're super versatile. If you wanna make video easy, Please subscribe to SparkSight, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.